Titans, it's Friday, November 20th. I'm Jacob Keeter, and you're watching Sentent News. I don't know about you Titans, but my favorite part of Thanksgiving are the sides. Trent dishes out more about Thanksgiving. What is your favorite Thanksgiving side dish? A survey was conducted across school to find out what students' favorite Thanksgiving sides were. There were an abundance of different answers, so let's see what the data shows. End results show 26.9% of participants liked mashed potatoes the best, while 23.1% liked bread the most. Scattered votes went for turkey dressing, cranberry sauce, cream corn, and candy DMs. Taking a closer look at this graph, we could see a pyramid in this hat, and a slightly smaller pyramid here. Macaroni and cheese. Children. I like baked macaroni and cheese the best, but candied yams are my second favorite. The heck y'all mean it's the macaroni and cheese with the bread crumbs on it. Mac and C H E E S E. If one lesson can be learned from this survey, mac and cheese should definitely be a Thanksgiving side dish. My name is Trenty Mel, reporting for Sen 10 News. Many Titans are curious, will there be any theater productions this year? Here's Austin with more about what it takes to plan a pet play in the pandemic. Last week, our Titan Theater pulled off an amazing performance called The Delightful Quarantine. But it was not easy, especially due to COVID-19 this year. I asked a few theater kids what their role was and how has COVID-19 impacted their theater experience this year. Um, Delightful Quarantine is a show about people in circumstances that they don't usually find themselves in, being stuck in quarantine, being with people that, you know, they aren't normally with. I play a grandmother. Her name is Mavis Jemko. I'm 98. And basically, I get trapped with my best friend, Violet, uh, with an intruder, a burglar who comes into our house, and we have to figure out how to quarantine with him. I think COVID has, for one thing, we aren't allowed to be in the room for more than 30 minutes together all together. We get to go outside and we get to, you know, bond a little bit more, I feel like. And even though COVID is a giant barrier, I think um, finding that balance kind of just makes you better as an actor, especially these masks. It forces us to be louder, and I think that'll help in the long run. Uh, I help move the platforms that are representative of the houses in the show. It's a lot less interactive. There are a lot less projects we can help each other with. We, all, we just all have to wear masks. We can't sit near each other. All of the usual stuff. Even though times have been tough, our Titan Theater gave it their all and performed beautifully November 13th, last Friday. This has been Austin Murphy with Sen10 News. Wondering what our Titan alumni are up to these days? Our spotlight features Centennial alumni Michael Cooper. Here's Owen with more. Michael Cooper graduated from Centennial High School in 2014. Now, he's serving as an advisor for the state of Texas's higher education budget. We reached out to him to see how his life has been since he walked these halls. Going through my undergrad, I had the opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. for a week-long immersive experience um, with the Department of Political Science at A&M. And so that really gave me a lot of exposure to what that work looked like. And so following um, that, that experience, I went on, I graduated, and I got to do an internship program in Washington where I worked with the Texas A&M uh, Federal Relations Office. And then I was able to turn that into a job with uh, one of the premier federal relations firms that focuses on higher education in Washington, D.C. When I was looking for positions um, in Texas, a position opened up with the Legislative Budget Board um, for their higher education team. And so I applied and just really shaped my application and my interviewing around that experience representing um, institutions of higher education. But obviously right now we're in kind of an unprecedented time um, with COVID, with continuing Harvey recovery, with um, just different new and emerging challenges and opportunities for the state. So we're just trying to give them the best information possible to help them make those decisions. It's inspiring to see that another former Centennial student has been able to accomplish so much in just six years. I'm Owen Davis with Centennial. Are you in need of some great Black Friday deals? Many realtors are expecting the demand to go online. Sid has you covered. Black Friday, a day that is known nationwide for its great deals and discounts on everyday items and appliances. 
On a normal year, it's known for the long lines outside of many known brands and record sales hit by stores. But this year, due to COVID, is not a normal year. Walmart, for example, is taking precautions for COVID and is not doing a traditional Black Friday. Instead, they're presenting deals to shoppers every week in the month of November. Here's a list of most of the stores that will be closed on Black Friday. But not all stores are taking this approach. Best Buy, just like every year, will be opening their doors and giving exclusive deals for being early. So, if you're going Black Friday shopping, do some research to make sure your store is open. This is Sid Shaw with Sentent News. Everyone knows Thanksgiving is all about the food. Our own Andrew Jones has a few tips on how to carefully create a classic, the PB&J. Many would agree that the best part of the holiday season is the delicious food, including the popular delicacy known as a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You may not feel comfortable making such a complicated dish this Thanksgiving, but I believe that anyone can, and today I will show you how to make your very first PB&J. The ingredients and supplies are two slices of bread, peanut butter, jelly, a knife, a scale, a ruler, a graphing calculator, and an apple. The first step is to measure which piece of bread is thicker, because it always goes on the bottom. Next, you will calculate the amount of peanut butter and jelly you need according to your preferred peanut butter to jelly ratio. My preferred ratio is 2.5 to 1, so I will go ahead and measure out the proper weight against about a tablespoon of jelly. Now we will spread out the ingredients. There is a precise technique for smoothing the peanut butter, and it goes something like this. Spread your jelly on the other side. Place the slices together carefully. And you're done. This has been Andrew Jones for Sen 10 News. Thanks for watching, Titans. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And for more information, go to www.sentinnews.com. See you next time.